Hello friends, welcome to Expert Medical Coding. In today's video, we are going to learn about Diabetes Mellitus. We are going to see what is Diabetes Mellitus is, what are the symptoms of it, causes, complications, tests, treatment and precautions. So, let's get started. What is Diabetes Mellitus? Diabetes Mellitus is a disorder that causes high sugar levels in blood. It occurs either when the pancreas does not produce enough insulin or when the body cannot effectively use the insulin called as insulin resistance. What is insulin? Insulin is an essential hormone that is produced by your pancreas. What is the function of insulin? Insulin moves glucose from your blood into all over your body cells to produce energy. There are many trillions of cells in our body. Let us see one particular cell to know the function of the insulin. To let glucose into the cell, the door to the cell has to be unlocked. Insulin is the key that unlocks the door. If the insulin key works in the lock, the door will open. When insulin unlocks the cell door, glucose can move from the blood into the cell to provide energy. But in insulin resistance, your cells don't react and don't open up, resulting in excessive sugar in the blood. In other scenario, your pancreas makes insulin, but not as much as you need. Your insulin might be working well at opening the locked doors of your cells, but your pancreas does not make enough insulin keys to open all of the locks, resulting in high sugar in bloodstream. So, when the pancreas does not produce enough insulin, excess amount of glucose circulates in the blood and leads to diabetes mellitus. Now let us see the symptoms of diabetes mellitus. They are increased thirst called as polydipsia and dry mouth, fatigue, frequent urination, blurred vision, numbness or tingling in your hands or feet, unexplained weight loss, Feeling irritable or having other mood changes. Feeling tired and weak. Slow healing sores or cuts. Frequent skin and or vaginal yeast infections. Now let us see the causes. The first cause for the diabetes mellitus is insulin resistance. When you eat food, your body converts that food into dietary sugars. Insulin is a hormone released by the pancreas that tells your cells to open up to that sugar and convert it into energy. When insulin resistance happens, the cells don't react and don't open up, resulting in excessive sugar in the blood causes diabetes mellitus. The second cause is the autoimmune diseases. Autoimmune diabetes mellitus or type 1 diabetes mellitus is an organ specific autoimmune disease that affects the insulin producing pancreatic beta cells. After an inflammatory process leads to a chronic deficiency of insulin in genetically susceptible individuals. The next cause is the hormonal imbalances. During pregnancy, an organ called the placenta gives a growing baby nutrients and oxygen. The placenta also makes hormones. In late pregnancy, the hormones estrogen, cortisol and human placental lactogen can block insulin. When insulin is blocked, it is called insulin resistance. Glucose can't able to go into the body's cells. The glucose stays in the blood and makes the blood sugar levels go high, causes diabetes mellitus. The next cause is the pancreatic damage. Physical damage to your pancreas from surgery or injury can impact its ability to make insulin, resulting in type 3 diabetes. Next cause is overweight, obesity and physical inactivity. If you are not physically active and are overweight or have obesity, you are more likely to have type 2 diabetes mellitus. Extra weight sometimes causes insulin resistance and is common in people with type 2 diabetes. The next cause is the genetic mutations. Certain genetic mutations can cause maturity onset diabetes of the young and neonatal diabetes. Next cause is the stress. When stressed, the body prepares itself by ensuring that 
enough sugar or energy is readily available. Insulin levels fall, glucagon and adrenaline levels rise and more glucose is released from the liver. At the same time, growth hormone and cortisol levels rise which causes body tissues, muscle and fat to less sensitive to insulin. As a result, more glucose is available in the bloodstream. Now let us discuss about the complications. Diabetes can cause a host of complications that can affect nearly every organ in the body. The complications are heart diseases, stroke, diabetic nephropathy that is kidney disease, diabetic neuropathy that is nerve damage, diabetic retinopathy that is eye damage, diabetic gastroparesis, erectile dysfunction, skin problems, infection, dental problems and ketoacidosis. Now let us discuss about the tests. The first test is the HbA1c test. The HbA1c test measures your average blood sugar level over the past 3 months and HbA1c below 5.7% is normal. Between 5.7 and 6.4% indicates you have prediabetes and 6.5% or higher indicates that you have diabetes. Next test is the fasting blood sugar test. This measures your blood sugar after an overnight fasting. A fasting blood sugar level of 99 mg per deciliter or lower is normal. 100 to 125 mg per deciliter indicates you have prediabetes and 126 mg per deciliter or higher indicates that you have diabetes. Next test is random blood sugar test. This measures your blood sugar at the time you are tested. You can take this test at any time and don't need to fast. A blood sugar level of 200 mg per deciliter or higher indicates that you have diabetes. Next test is the glucose screening test. This measures your blood sugar at the time you are tested. You will drink a liquid that contains glucose and then one hour later your blood will be drawn to check your blood sugar levels. A normal result is 140 mg per deciliter or lower. If your level is higher than 140 mg per deciliter, you will need to take a glucose tolerance test. Glucose tolerance test. This measures your blood sugar before and after you drink a liquid that contains glucose. You will fast overnight before the test and have your blood drawn to determine your fasting blood sugar levels. Then you will drink the liquid and have your blood sugar level checked 1 hour, 2 hours and possibly 3 hours afterwards. At 2 hours, a blood sugar level of 140 mg per deciliter or lower is considered as normal. 140 to 199 mg per deciliter indicates you have pre-diabetes and 200 mg per deciliter or higher indicates that you have diabetes. If your doctor suspects you have type 1 diabetes, your, doc, your blood may also get tested for autoantibodies, often present in type 1 diabetes. Ketones will be tested in urine. High levels of ketones in urine or ketonuria is usually a sign of diabetic ketoacidosis. Test for gestational diabetes. If you are at average risk of gestational diabetes, you will likely have a screening test during your second trimester between 24 to 28 weeks of pregnancy. Next test is the genetic testing. Genetic testing can diagnose most forms of monogenic diabetes, which is caused by a change or mutation in a gene. It is more common in babies who develop diabetes before they are 6 months old, some teens and some young adults. Now let us discuss about the treatment. Management of type 2 diabetes include healthy eating, regular exercise, weight loss, possibly diabetes medication or insulin therapy and blood sugar monitoring. If you can't maintain your target blood sugar level with diet and exercise, your provider may prescribe diabetic medications that help lower glucose levels or your provider may suggest insulin therapy. Medicines for type 2 diabetes include the following. Metformin. Metformin is generally the first medicine prescribed for type 2 diabetes. It works mainly by lowering glucose production in the liver and improving the body's sensitivity to insulin so it uses insulin more effectively. 
सल्फोनाइल यूरिया से सल्फोनाइल यूरिया से हेल्प द बॉडी सिक्रेट मोर इंसुलिन एग्जाम्पल्स इंक्लूड ग्लाइबोराइड ग्लिपिजाइड एंड ग्लिमिप्राइड ग्लाइनाइड्स ग्लाइनाइड स्टिम्युलेट द पैनक्रियास टू सिक्रेट मोर इंसुलिन दे आर फास्ट एक्टिंग दे द सल्फोनाइल यूरिया बट देर एफेक्ट इन द बॉडी इज शॉर्टर एग्जाम्पल इंक्लूड रिपेक्लेनाइड एंड नेटेक्लेनाइड थया जोलिडाइन डयोन्स थया जोलिडाइन डयोन्स मेक द बॉडी टिश्यूज मोर सेंसिटिव टू इंसुलिन एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ दिस मेडिसिन इज पायोग्लेटाजोन Some people who have type 2 diabetes need insulin therapy if blood sugar targets aren't met with lifestyle changes and other medicines. DPP-4 inhibitors. DPP-4 inhibitors help reduce blood sugar levels but tend to have a very modest effect. Examples include sitagliptin, saxagliptin and linagliptin. GLP-1 receptor agonists. GLP-1 receptor agonists are injectable medications that slow digestion and help lower blood sugar levels their use is often associated with weight loss and some may reduce the risk of stroke and heart attack examples include liraglutide and semaglutide sglt2 inhibitors sglt2 inhibitors affect the blood filtering functions in the kidneys by blocking the return of glucose to the blood stream as a result glucose is removed in the urine These medicines may reduce the risk of heart attack and stroke in people with a high risk of those conditions. Examples include canagliflozin, dapagliflozin and empagliflozin. Type 1 diabetes treatment. If you have type 1 diabetes, you will need to use insulin to treat your diabetes. You take the insulin by injection or by using a pump. Next treatment is pancreas transplant. A pancreas transplant is a surgical procedure to place a healthy pancreas from a deceased donor into a person whose pancreas no longer functions properly. Next treatment option is islet cell transplantation. In islet cell transplantation, beta cells are removed from a donor's pancreas and transferred into a person with type 1 diabetes. Beta cells are one type of cell found in the islets of the pancreas and produce insulin. which regulates blood sugar levels once transplanted the donor islet begins to make and release insulin now let us see the precautions lose extra weight be more physically active eat healthy plant foods skip fat diets and make healthier choices eat healthy fats don't smoke drink water as your primary beverage cut back on sedentary behaviors keep your blood pressure and cholesterol under control please like share and subscribe to expert medical coding thanks for watching